Hello, good evening, welcome to evening prayer on Thursday the 2nd of September from St Mary's Halesworth. My dog is with me and I've chained him to the altar so as he walks about you might hear the chains rattling but um, better than him eating through his lead and escaping and running off. Welcome whether you're joining us on Facebook, Zoom or YouTube. If you'd like to join on another format, Zoom, the uh, meeting ID and the passcode are available from the Blythe Team Ministry Facebook page and our website. Uh, or you can get in touch with me directly and I'll let you have those. Facebook, I'm streaming from the um, Blythe Valley Team page, which is a public page. And uh, I'll be putting this up as an audio on uh, YouTube on my um, my uh, YouTube channel under my name and that will be publicly available once I've uh, attached to a photograph of the church and uploaded it. We're using the Church of England's Common Worship Daily Prayer material which is available online from the church's website or from Aremus Daily Prayer or indeed from uh, Daily Prayer, the Common Worship book itself. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make hate to haste to help us. A song of God's chosen one. There shall come forth a shoot from the stock of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf, the lion, and the fatling together, with a little child to lead them. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. Whereas the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. And so we turn to the Psalter. The Psalms are at the back of the book, where we find them by scrolling on. Those set for this afternoon are 138, 140 and 141. I will read them through. We say the refrains together and the glory be at the end of each psalm. If you want to use the prayers that follow, you're welcome to do that in silence. Your loving kindness, O Lord, endures forever. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise to you. I will bow down towards your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. In the day that I called to you, you answered me. You put new strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he watches over the lowly. As for the proud, he regards them from afar. 
Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will preserve me. You will stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand will save me. The Lord shall make good his purpose for me. Your loving kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Your loving kindness, O Lord, endures for ever. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Deliver me, O Lord, from evildoers, and protect me from the violent, who devise evil in their hearts and stir up strife all the day long. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent, and as poison is under their lips. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Protect me from the violent who seek to make me stumble. The proud have laid a snare for me and spread out a net of cords. They have set traps along my path. I have said to the Lord, you are my God. Listen, O Lord, to the voice of my supplication. O Lord God, the strength of my salvation, you have covered my head in the day of battle. Do not grant the desires of the wicked, O Lord. Do not prosper their wicked plans. Let not those who surround me lift up their heads. Let the evil of their own lips fall upon them. Let hot burning coals rain upon them. Let them be cast into the depths that they rise not again. No slanderer shall prosper on the earth, and evil shall hunt down the violent to overthrow them. I know that the Lord will bring justice for the oppressed, and maintain the cause of the needy. Surely the righteous will give thanks to your name, and the upright shall dwell in your presence. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Set a watch before my mouth, O Lord. O Lord, I call to you, come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a watch before my mouth, O Lord, and guard the door of my lips. Let not my heart incline to any evil thing. Let me not be occupied in wickedness with evildoers, nor taste the pleasures of their table. Let the righteous smite me in friendly rebuke, but let not the oil of the unrighteous anoint my head, for my prayer is continually against their wicked deeds. Let their rulers be overthrown in stony places, then they may know that my words are sweet. As when a plough turns over the earth in furrows, let their bones be scattered at the mouth of the pit. But my eyes are turned to you, Lord God. In you I take refuge, do not leave me defenceless. Protect me from the snare which they have laid for me, and from the traps of evildoers. Let the wicked fall into their own nets, while I pass by in safety. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Set a watch before my mouth, O Lord. And so to the canticle, great and wonderful, if you are following online, we scroll past the first reading. All nations shall come and worship you, O Christ, and share in the feast of your kingdom. Great and wonderful are your deeds, Lord God the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O ruler of the nations, who shall not revere and praise your name, O Lord, for you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship in your presence, for your just dealings have been revealed. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. 
All nations shall come and worship you, O Christ, and share in the feast of your kingdom. A reading from Celebrating the Saints, the White Road Army of Martyrs by David Hand, First Archbishop of Papua New Guinea. As the thrust of the Japanese invasion approached Papua New Guinea in 1942, Bishop Philip Strong broadcast over the radio a message to his staff which has become famous in the annals of missionary history. He said we could never hold up our faces again if for our own safety we all forsook him and fled when the shadows of the passion began to gather around him in his spiritual body, the church in Papua. Our life in the future would be burdened with shame and we could not come back here and face our people again and we would be conscious always of rejected opportunities. The history of the church tells us that missionaries do not think of themselves in the hour of danger and crisis, but of the master who called them to give their all, and of the people they have been trusted to serve and love to the uttermost. His watchword is nonetheless true today as it was when he gave it to the first disciples. Whosoever would save his life will lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake and the gospels shall find it. We could not leave unless God who called us required it of us and our spiritual instinct tells us he would never require such a thing at such an hour. No, my brothers and sisters, fellow workers in Christ, whatever others may do, we cannot leave. We shall not leave. We st- shall stand by our trust. We shall stand by our vocation. Papua is a body, the church. God will not forsake us. He will uphold us. He will strengthen us and he will guide us and keep us through the days that lie ahead. If we all left, it would take years for the church to recover from our betrayal of our trust. If we remain, and even if the worst came to the worst, and we were all to perish in remaining, the church will not perish, for there would have been no breach of trust in its walls, but its foundations and structure would have received added strength for all the future building by our faithfulness unto death. This, I believe, is the resolution of you all. I know there are special circumstances which may make it imperative for one or two to go, if arrangements can be made for them to do so. For the rest of us, we have made our resolution to stay. Let us not shrink from it. Let us trust and not be afraid. To you all I send my blessing. The Lord be with you. What happened? To a man and woman, all the bishop's staff stood by their people until it became clear that 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 course might imperil their people. The bishop himself was bombed and machine gunned. He escaped injury despite travelling freely and fearlessly around his diocese to care for and encouraged his staff and people, as well as acting as senior chaplain to the military. Among those who died were the two Goner sisters, teacher Mavis Parkinson and nurse May Heyman. They were handed over the Japanese and bayoneted to death at Ururu, where an altar shrine now marks the spot. Elderly and holy Father Henry Holland, having served in Papua New Guinea for 25 years, first as a lay evangelist and latterly as a priest at Isitiva, stacks of whose translations of the scriptures into the Orokeva language were scattered and lost when the Japanese looted his, looted his station. He and John Duffel, his close colleague, were both killed. Father Vivian Redlich of Sangara, who refused to abandon his Sunday mass when warning came that the Japanese arrival at his camp was imminent, and Lucian Tapiedi, his devoted teacher evangelist, who had said to his married colleagues, take your wives and families to the bush and hide. I am single. I'll stay with the fathers and sisters. It doesn't matter if the Japanese get me. The Sangram missionary teachers, Lilla Lashmar and Marjorie Brenchley, who had laid the foundations of the church's education work in the Orokeva area, all perished. John Barge, recently posted to open up work in a totally unevangelised area, refused to go bush with the nearest Roman Catholic priest. Forced to dig his own grave, he was then shot into it by Japanese guns. Many people blamed Bishop Strong for not taking out all his staff to safety, but it was ultimately their own choice. To the world it seemed a waste, a tragedy, a failure, like Calvary. But look what God has done with it. With their defeat, he has turned it into victory. Look at the rise of the martyrs' school in their honour, a living organism, not just a memorial, serving God and the nation. Look at the fruit of martyrdom in the ability of the Orokeva Church to resurrect after the Lamington eruption. Look at the post-World War II leap forward into inland Papuan areas. 
the New Britain Resurrection and the Great Putsch into the New Guinea Highlands. Yes, the blood of the martyrs has once again proved to be the seed of the church here in this country. Thanks be to God. Our first Bible reading is Samuel 19 from 29. Sorry, Samuel 19 from 24. Mephibosheth, grandson of Saul, came down to meet the king. He had not taken care of his feet, or trimmed his beard, or washed his clothes from the day the king left until the day he came back in safety. When he came from Jerusalem to meet the king, the king said to him, Why did you not go with me, Mephibosheth? He answered, My lord, O king, my servant deceived me, for your servant said to him, Saddle a donkey for me, so that I may ride on it and go with the king. For your servant is lame, he has slandered your servant to my lord the king, but my lord the king is like the angel of God, do therefore what seemed good to you. For all my father's house were doomed to death before my lord the king, but you set your servant among those who eat at your table. What further right have I then to appeal to the king? The king said to him, Why speak any more of your affairs? I have decided you and Ziba shall divide the land. Mephibosheth said to the king, Let him take it all, since my lord the king has arrived home in safety. Now Barzillai the Gileadite had come down from Rogalim. He went on with the king to the Jordan to escort him over the Jordan. Barzillai was a very aged man, eighty years old. He had provided the king with food while he stayed at Mahanaim, for he was a very wealthy man. The king said to Barzillai, Come over with me and I will provide for you in Jerusalem at my side. But Barzillai said to the king, How many years have I still to live that I should go up with the king to Jerusalem? Today I am eighty years old. Can I discern what is pleasant and what is not? Can your servant taste what he eats or what he drinks? Can I still listen to the voice of singing men and singing women? Why then should your servant be an added burden to my lord the king? Your servant will go a little way over the Jordan with the king. Why should the king recompense me with such a reward? Please let your servant return so that I may die in my own town, near the graves of my father and my mother. But here is your servant Chimham. Let him go over with my lord the king and do for him whatever seems good to you. The king answered, Chimham shall go over with me and I will do for him whatever seems good to you. And all that you desire of me I will do for you. Then all the people crossed over the Jordan, and the king crossed over. The king kissed Barzillai and blessed him, and he returned to his own home. The king went on to Gilgal, and Chimam went on with him. All the people of Judah, and also half the people of Israel, brought the king on his way. Then all the people of Israel came to the king and said to him, Why have our kindred, the people of Judah, stolen you away, and brought the king and his household over the Jordan, and all David's men with him? All the people of Judah answered the people of Israel, because the king is nearer of kin to us. Why then are you angry over this matter? Have we eaten at all at the king's expense? Or has he given us any gift? But the people of Israel answered the people of Judah, We have ten shares in the king, and in David also we have more than you. Why then did you despise us? Were we not the first to speak of bringing back our king? But the words of the people of Judah were fiercer than the words of the people of Israel. Apologise for uh, the behaviour of my dog. That if you're watching on the video, is uh, probably more than a little disruptive. The first reading has the discussion of um, Mephibosheth, who was one of the people who was involved in David's leaving when Absalom um, set up an insurrection. And uh, he comes to the king to apologise, and the king makes peace with him. And uh, we're then told that somebody else turns up, who again was involved in David's leaving, and makes peace with the king. And then we have this discussion between the people of Israel and the people of Judah, the two kingdoms. And there's this discussion about who is king and how they might uh, work together. 
Our second reading is from Acts 12, 1 to 17. About that time, King Herod laid violent hands upon some who belonged to the church. He had James, the brother of John, killed with the sword. After he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. This was during the festival of unleavened bread. When he had seized him, he put him in prison and handed him over to four guards of soldiers to guard him, intending to bring him out to the people after the Passover. While Peter was kept in prison, the church prayed fervently to God for him. The very night before Herod was going to bring him out, Peter, bound with two chains, was sleeping between two soldiers, while guards in front of the door were keeping watch over the prison. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. He tapped Peter on the side and woke him, saying, Get up quickly, and the chains fell off his wrists. The angel said to him, Fasten your belt, put on your sandals, and he did so. Then he said to him, Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. Peter went out and followed him. He did not realise what was happening with the angels that what was happening with the angels' help was real. He thought he was seeing a vision. After they had passed the first and the second guard after he had passed the first and the second guard, they came before the iron gate leading into the city. It opened for them of its own accord, and they went outside and walked along a lane. When suddenly the angel left him, then Peter came to himself and said, Now I am sure that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hands of Herod and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. As soon as he realised this, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose other name was Mark, where many had gathered and were praying. When he knocked at the outer gate, a maid named Rhoda came to answer. On recognising Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed that instead of opening the gate, she ran in and announced that Peter was outside, so standing at the gate. They said to her, you are out of your mind, but she insisted that it was so. So they said, it is his angel. Meanwhile, Peter continued knocking, and when they opened the gate, they saw him and were amazed. He motioned to them with his hands to be silent, and described for them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he added, tell this to James and to the believers. Then he left and went to another place. We have persecution of Christians presented to us and a response of prayer. And depending on how we understand these things, an actual angel, a messenger of God, waking Peter up, releasing him from prison miraculously. And when he realises that in fact he's not dreaming, but it is true he is out, he goes to meet the believers. And uh, the young woman who lets, should have just let him in was so excited as they were praying for his release, she goes in and tells them that he's there rather than letting him in. Do we sometimes spend so much time praying that we miss the answer? And so to the responsory. Fear not, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. Fear not, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name, you are mine. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. And so to the song of Mary. You have filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You have filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. Let us pray. As we come to the close of this day, and the night 
shrouds the day and closes in. We recognise our vulnerability before you and before the world. We recognise our need to rest and sleep. And indeed, we comprehend our ending, recognising you to be immortal, invisible, God only wise, all present, unsleeping. And we commend and commit ourselves to your safekeeping and care, that we may be restored and revived as we rest. We ask that you will keep us safe. Prayers for Afghanistan from Release International. We pray that the Holy Spirit will bring scripture and worship songs to the minds of our brothers and sisters there, and that efforts to secure safe refuge for those who are fleeing will meet with success. We also pray that the concerted campaign against believers in Algeria, including numerous church closures, will prompt many more Algerians to explore Christianity. From Christian Aid, who uh, in their, on their website suggest they're going to produce a prayer diary for September, but there's still information about um, other nations that were provided for August. We pray for young people trying to learn the skills they need to be resilient in the face of climate change in Malawi and Zimbabwe. Pray for Christian Aid partners as they work on disaster, disaster risk reduction to help communities weather the ever-changing conditions. In our Suffolk Diocese, we are invited today to pray for Hadley Deanery, Hadley Lehman and Shelley and their clergy Joe. We pray for ordinands and licensed lay ministers beginning training this year. And Simon in Nyan Timber Parish in Biharumulo, our connected diocese in Kagera. And in our group, we pray for people in Chediston, Wissett, Spexel and Linstead. Those living in Wissett Road, Godfrey's Hill, Chediston Road, Chediston Street, Nuns Hill, Linstead Road, Rumba Road, Lodge Lane, Halesworth Road and the Street the Street, Lodge Lane, Grays Lane, Nuns Hill, Farm Close, Wissett Road, Banks Lane, Rumble Road and Chediston Road. The Poplars, Grub Lane, Stone Street, Hog Lane, Hall Lane, Church Lane, Halesworth Road, Butts Road, Gavel Street and Nollers Lane. Halesworth Road, Godfrey's Lane, Mary's Lane, Linstead Road, St James's Lane, Rookery Lane, Chediston Road, Cratfield Road, The Street and Church Lane. I pray that people living in these places, whether they have faith or not, will be encouraged and blessed this night whether they worship with us or elsewhere. Pray for businesses based there that they will thrive and prosper. In our corona cycle, we pray for charities, schools and local businesses affected by the virus. We pray that they will all do well. One moment. I think the dog has got something over here. We pray that local businesses will make sound decisions and those that have folded, that they will find other avenues for, to use their skills and talents. We pray for people whose employment has ended as a result of those local businesses folding. We pray that they will be able to turn their attention to trade in the new environment as we learn to live with coronavirus and get their budgets back balanced and their accounts in order that they may continue to provide goods, jobs and local services. Remember, too, those who are struggling. Mm -hmm. sure this will work in the future. We pray for Peter, Margaret, Anne, Roger, Betty, Anthony, Jim, Ron, Beryl, Maggie, Pauline, Nicholas, Barbara, Rosie, Mary, Jill. Jean, Valerie, Paul, Sarah, Francis, Di, Linda, Dennis and Kay, Olive, Doreen, David, Paddy, Mike and Jean. We ask for blessings of health, wealth, pros pros health, health, wealth, prosperity on them in their circumstance. We pray for those that care for them. And we give you thanks for all that was good in the lives of Sally, Margaret, Reginald, Andy, Gillian, Ben, Ray, Roger, Graham, Pauline, Graham and Richard. 
We pray to you for all whose years mine falls at this time, those we have known and loved and see no longer, those who have served you faithfully here. Rest and grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. We pray for ourselves and all who mourn that you will be for us the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Collect for Thursday afternoon evening prayer from the book. O God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, give to your servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and that freed from the fear of our enemies, we may pass, we may pass our time in rest and quietness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good night.